Hello everybody and welcome back to another Golang tutorial. So in this video we're going to be talking about the switch statement. Now the switch statement is very similar to the if, else if, and else structure we've seen previously. This works a little bit different, it's more to accommodate a specific case and make our code a little bit cleaner, uh, but I'll show it to you here and you will see very quickly why you might use a switch statement versus an if, else if, and else. So I'm just going to code one out to start and then we'll just walk through the syntax and talk about how it works. So the keyword to start a switch statement is switch. Uh, I'm going to say switch, I'm going to put some variable here, and this is the variable that I want to check the values for. So the idea behind a switch is we're not really going to be doing comparisons in terms of like greater than, less than, we're just going to check if this variable here is equal to a bunch of different things. And if it's equal to any of those things, then what we'll do is we'll execute some code based on what it's equivalent to. So I'll say switch ANS, and again, remember that what I'm doing with ANS is I'm just going to be checking the value of ANS and see if this is equal to what I'm about to type here. So if I do something like case one, what this says is, okay, the first case in our switch statement is if ANS is equal to one. If it's equal to one, what I'll do is whatever is indented right after that colon and this case. So I would print LN, let's say one, okay? So this is the syntax case one. This is the value that we want to check. Um, you could, you know, put a string here. If the variable above was a string, it doesn't have to be a number. You put colon, then what you want to do indented underneath. And if we want to do multiple things, that'd be fine. We could print them out like that. So maybe I'll do one, like I could just do like one like that, just show you this first line. And both of these will print out since they're indented underneath this colon. Now to add another case, I can do case two fmt.print line, let's just print two like that. And then I could go case three and we can do as many cases as we want. So you can see that this is nice for kind of organizing your code and making things really clean. It's pretty easy to see what's going to happen in each case because you can just look right here and see what the value is and what's going to happen after that value, you know, occurs or is equal to that. And the last thing to show here is the default statement. So this is an optional statement. But what this says is assuming that this variable is not equal to any of these cases, go ahead and run the default. So I'll say fmt.println not a case. So that pretty much is like the else statement on the if else l if structure. Now there's a few more things to talk about, but let me just print this out and show you what happens, say if ans is equal to one. So let's go go run tutorial.go. We get the value one, one, right? So it just prints out the two things that I showed you here. And then if we set this equal to, let's skip two, let's just go to three, which is not one of the cases. Go run tutorial.go. We get not a case. Now, what we can also do is we can check for multiple cases on the same line. So say that I want to do this, I want to print out one and one, like both of these lines here. Uh, if this is equal to one or negative one. Then all I have to do is rather than making a new case and repeating this code is I just do all of the things that I want to check for uh, separated by commas after the case, right? So I write case and now I'm checking if it's one or negative one. If it's either of those, then I'll do both of that. So I'll prove that to you. Let's go negative one and have a look here and we get one one. Now this works the same um, with other variables as well that we've seen before. So I cannot do something like this, right? I can't put a string here and you'll see if I save this, what's going to happen Let's get the squiggly line popping up. And it says that uh, there's a mismatch type because, well, this is an integer and this is a string and we can't check the equivalence between an integer and a string. So keep that in mind uh, that the cases need to be the same. You can do as many cases as you want. You can do a default case. And there's one more paradigm to writing the switch statement that I'll show you, which doesn't actually involve putting a variable here at all. Now, this is a little bit like, why would you want to do this? But I'll show this to you anyways, there's some uses for it. If you just switch with no variable up here, then what you have to do when you write your cases is directly reference the variable. So I say if case ans greater than zero, right? And then here I can do what I want. I'm going to fmt.println um, greater than zero. I can do another case. So case ans less than zero, or I guess I could just do the default case then, whatever you want fmt.println uh, less than zero. And then finally, I guess we would add a default case that says fmt.println zero. So this is another example of what you can do with a switch statement. Again, right, like what's kind of the point of doing this versus if else? There's not really any point of doing this versus if else for the example I've shown. Uh, but, you know, if you have a bunch of cases that are related and you just want to write a switch statement rather than if else, like maybe that just looks better to you uh, or 
for some reason in your specific case, it makes sense to do this, uh, then you can write a switch statement. But this is valid. This is totally valid. This is just saying, okay, we're not going to put a variable here. But what that means is I have to directly reference the variable, which kind of gets rid of the point of a switch statement anyways. But you know, sometimes you might want to do something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to run this and I'll just show you uh, that this does work. I'm not making this up. Let's have a look less than zero. And that's pretty much it for the switch statement. There's not much more I could think to show you. If you guys think I forgot anything, let me know. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.